What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we're diving deep into some Skyrim perk decisions and talking about five of the worst perks in the game. Now we've made this after our original five worst perks video which can be found in the description because you guys really, really wanted a part two. Now I'm more than happy to deliver and believe me when I say there's plenty of crap perks left to share. So with that said, in no particular order, I present you with five more of the worst perks in all of Skyrim. So first up, we have a perk for the most insecure characters in Skyrim, Intimidation. Now don't get me wrong, intimidating people can be a great method of getting your way and role-playing a really scary character. However, the Intimidation perk is trash and you definitely shouldn't get it, as cool as it sounds. What it does is make Intimidation checks twice as likely to be successful. The problem is that you need level 70 speech to get it, and by this stage there aren't too many Intimidation checks that you can't pass, and secondly, you have even more chance of success because you're generally a high level by the time you have 70 speech. But why does that matter? Well, intimidation checks actually take your speech level and your actual player level into account. So the higher level you are, the easier the check becomes. This makes picking intimidation at level 70, which is when you can get it, basically useless. Maybe it'll help you for one hour of your playthrough for one pretty useless check at tops. Intimidation itself is plenty of fun, but the perk itself can be given a miss. Next, we're falling off a cliff and into the heavy armor tree and landing on the cushioned perk. The thing about this perk is that while it's not good, you need it if you want to move up to the conditioning perk, which can be good. But anyways, the cushioned perk makes you take half as much fall damage when wearing all heavy armor pieces. It also reduces damage from environmental physics, like if someone launched debris at you with a shout. The main problem with this perk, though, is that this stuff hardly ever happens. And if you're a strong, heavy armor, tanky character, then you should survive it easily anyway. Full damage in Skyrim also isn't very sensitive, like don't go jumping off cliffs and you're fine. Now if you do need to travel down a cliff, you can just easily zigzag down it no matter how steep it is without actually becoming airborne at all. You kind of have to jump off something way too high on purpose to take serious fall damage, and if you just want to do it because it's cool or because it's quicker to go somewhere, you could just pop on the become ethereal shout anyway and you'll take no damage at all without wasting a perk point. But like I said, you need cushioned to get conditioning but as a standalone perk, it stands as a pretty bad one alongside the rest of these. Moving on to a perk that involves something that looks cool but isn't effective, we have Rune Master. Runes in Skyrim look amazing, and the concept of being able to lay magical traps is something that I absolutely love. It's such an unorthodox method of combat to use, but at the same time it plays off really traditional fantasy magic themes. However, there are problems, and it very much reminds me of a situation we saw in our original Worst Perks video with Ward Absorb. This problem is that runes are bad in general. They only do 50 points of base damage and cost a ton of magic at a cast. You can always just use normal magic to defeat your enemies, and if you're using it with a stealth build, it's only for the cool playstyle, not for being effective. 50 damage is just too weak to dispatch competent enemies with, and the fact that you have to lay it like a trap makes it even more complicated. Then, as I mentioned, there's the issue with casting cost. The base cost of a measly fire rune is 234 magicka points just for that 50 damage. Sadly, Rune Master does not increase the damage of the spell, but rather just lets you cast it five times further away. To begin with, you couldn't cast it that far away, so overall it doesn't make the spell that much more useful. I mean, yeah, the extra casting distance is definitely an improvement, but it's not worth spending an extra perk point on. Definitely save this one for a role-playing build that revolves around rune casting purely. Maybe increase your spell damage for that build by using alchemy alongside it. Guard your purses, we've got a pickpocket here. Introducing the Keymaster perk from the pickpocket seal tree. This perk makes pickpocketing keys off people almost always succeed. The reason it's not worth getting though are pretty straightforward. Firstly, pickpocketing keys is extremely easy. They basically all have a value and weight of zero, so they're not hard to take. Secondly, you need level 60 pickpocket to get the perk, by which stage you should have no problem, considering that they're already easy to steal. The perk's pretty much useless, earning a well-deserved spot on this list. There's also the fact that you hardly ever need to pickpocket keys, and technically you can just save the game before pickpocket attempts. Not that I really recommend that though. So in conclusion, the only master you'll be with this one is a master of picking shit perks. And finally, I present to you the final worst perk on this list, the speech skill tree sister of intimidation, the persuasion perk. This perk makes persuasion speech checks 30% easier to get, dropping the level requirements a fair bit. Unfortunately for you, you can't get this perk till your speech is level 50, meaning it only gives you access to hard and very hard speech 
speech checks at that point. Sounds alright, doesn't it? But then comes the problem that these speech checks are very limited compared to the vast amount of checks in the game with a lower speech requirement. The hard and very hard speech checks are often during quest lines you'd probably do first thing if you were a speech character, meaning that you wouldn't have 50 speech by that point anyway too. The speech checks also aren't all that beneficial. For example, a very hard speech check is getting Ferralda to let you into the College of Winterhold without you taking a test. You can find a list of them all online, but trust me when I say they're not too crash hot. So in summary, by the time you get it, you can pass most speech checks. The speech checks it lets you pass are often early on in a speech character's playthrough, so you can't get the perk anyway, for example in the Thieves Guild. And finally, the checks it gives you access to aren't that great, and you'll reach them in time anyway. The Amulet of Articulation can also be used to succeed at pretty much all of the persuasion checks, regardless of skill. And that, my friends, wraps up another Fudge Muppet packet of goodness. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button like you're getting the best perk in the game. Social media links are in the description, alongside a link to our Patreon if you want to support us, and part one of our worst perks in Skyrim video. My name is Michael, thanks for watching, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.